What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Life Coach Zach podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Lisa Nesneski, the meditating pharmacist. Lisa, how are you doing today? I'm great, Zach. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. Thanks so much for asking. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to jump on the podcast today. You're the self-proclaimed meditating pharmacist. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means? Well, yes, I have a day job as a pharmacist. I'm a consultant pharmacist for a Fortune 7 corporation. So I have all of that responsibility. But I got into mindfulness a few years back because I found that my life was falling apart. So if you let me tell a quick little story, um, I was in the emergency room at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center and my heart rate kept dropping. So my heart rate is normally in the 50s, but I had this terrible chest pain. And every time my heart would squeeze, it wasn't anginal pain, it would just, it was muscular of some sort. My heart rate kept dropping. It got all the way down to 28. And I looked over at my significant other. And I said, I don't want to miss my life. You know, tell the kids I love them. I don't want to miss my life. And so I started to ask myself questions and I began to question everything in my life and really become aware of what was happening in the moment, which is uh, basically the definition of mindfulness, being present in the moment for what's happening without judgment. But, you know, Going from a stressed out uh, professional, I had, I had, um, I was a hospital administrator. I had five departments under me and 275 employees. So, uh, that, that was a big responsibility and I was driving 60 miles each way to work back and forth. Wow. So, yeah. So, so I, I changed everything. I changed my job. I changed where I was living. I changed my, uh, significant others <laughs> and, and I really started to pay attention to myself and, um, through a lot of self healing. And that's, that's really where mindfulness helped me is, uh, to really become aware of not only my emotions and, um, how I was feeling about what was going on in my life, but it also helped me process them. And so I began to write and I wrote, um, I wrote two books so far that have been published, I've got two more in the works, uh, but um, yeah. So the first was Grounded in Chaos and that it, I use a narrative verse, like a po poetry where I um, talk about everything I was going through and, and the mindfulness is a, is a theme through that, but really the seven mindful questions, which is the second book really brought it down to um, a very simple formula. I'm aware because I care pause and breathe, choose a better alternative. So those are the seven questions, ABC, aware because care, pause and breathe. And then you're going backwards, choose a better alternative, CBA. So that's, that's the mnemonic to remember the seven mindful questions. And um, I, I would run those questions every single day you know, multiple times a day, in fact, just to kind of, you catch yourself when you're super stressed out, you find yourself, you know, where you just can't think straight, you know, and that's really what happened to me is that like, what am I doing right now? And why am I doing this? You know, not, not so much with judgment, but like, hello, wake up, pay attention. This is what's happening in your life right now. Mm -hmm. And then do you even care about that? Is that anything that's important to you? <laughs> Right. So, so those are the first three questions. And then I would pause and breathe, you know, and, and that pause and breathe resets your uh, parasympathetic nervous system. Yeah. I see you do that right now. It uh, turns on the body's rest and digest system where you slow down and allow yourself some clarity, you know, allow some space for something even better to come in. And that's really what the choose a better alternative is about mm -hmm. so that you can begin to really refocus and move forward. But it, it helps me so much to run these questions, whether I'm doing planning, long range planning, whether um, I'm actually uh, uh, planning my day, you know, like what, what am I doing right now? you know, and what's important to me. So you begin to align what you're doing with what 
really matters to you, what's important in your life. So um, that that's really what the, se- the the core of the seven mindful questions are. Very interesting. And that's it's ironic that you started talking about that because I was going to ask you, how do you practice mindfulness on a day-to-day basis? And it seems like you just run yourself through those questions. When did you start becoming more mindful and how has it changed your life for the better? So um, when I, I actually started with mindfulness was in the throes of this major change that I was going through. Um, one of my teachers, I, I've been meditating for a long time in different styles, but mindfulness came to me in um, uh, th- this teacher of mine was offering a five minute workshop every day. So for 60 days, can you, it was a challenge thing. So can you do five minutes every day? And I thought, yeah, I can, I can carve out five minutes. And I ended up doing it twice a day. Um, and I have never stopped meditating twice a day since then. So, um, so you asked me about how I do this on a day-to-day basis. I do spend time in informal meditation, if you will, you know, where I'm sitting and meditating in a mindful way, where I'm paying attention to the three basic anchors of mindfulness, which is breath, bodily sensations, ambient sounds. Those, those are the three basics. Of course, it, it goes from there. Um, so I do spend time in mindfulness meditation every day. Um, but I found that by doing that challenge, it uh, helped me really to, um, to, to slow my mind down. My mind was racing because of everything that was happening at that time in my life. And I find it still helps me calm myself down. And, and there are times when I'll take just a, a few minutes break where I just sit quietly and just pay attention to my breathing. Mm-hmm. And that really does um, significantly help. Uh, you know, I mentioned the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and di- digest system. You know, I, I probably was living a sympathetic lifestyle, you know, <laughs> where I never, ever got to, to uh, the point where my parasympathetic was turned on. And, and they actually think that my, my heart rate going down was an esophageal spasm. Um, it wasn't anything at all to do with my heart, but it's an interesting, um, I wasn't paying attention to my body at all, yeah. you know. And so it finally grabbed grabbed me by the throat basically and said, you're either going to do this or you're going to die. So, right. you know. Crazy. I feel like a lot of us are so pulled and we're just pulled in so many different directions, whether it's news or politics or the economy or people on social media, that it's tough for us to just stay grounded with our breath and a lot, something I say all the time is just listen to the beat of your heart. Try to feel the blood flowing through your veins because connecting yes. to our body and being aware of our own mind is something that's going to help us keep the most important thing, the most important thing, because all the things I mentioned, whether it's politics or the economy or inflation or people on social media, that is not the most important thing in your life. I don't know who you are that's watching, not you, but anyone that's watching this, I promise you those are not the most important things in your life. So, you know, mindfulness is something that's so important. It should be at the forefront of our high value micro tasks that we want to execute on a daily basis. And, you know, those steps that you mentioned and running through the ABCs, which I think is so smart, is how you do it, but other people do it in different ways. For example, every single morning when I'm drinking my water, when I wake up, I try to connect and have that be a cue to be mindful. And I used to set alarms on my watch every hour to check in and just like breathe, whether I'm at a traffic light or whether I'm in Publix, stand in the middle of the aisle and just breathe. And that has brought a lot of clarity to my values and my priorities in life and what I need to give my focus and attention to. So. You know, how can someone that's listening here that is never mindful, that's never meditated, how can they create a simple mindfulness habit or practice in their life? Well, you mentioned a trigger, if you will, where you said you uh, when you're drinking water, you're connecting with your body. And, and that's a really good way to do it. You know, as as we are here talking to one another we're both sitting in chairs and our bottoms are in the seat 
and our bottoms are connecting with the seat. You want to feel into where your body is, where your hands are. You might want to even roll your shoulders and take a deep breath and blow it out. One more deep breath and blow it out. And one more and blow it out. Zach, that's all it takes. Three simple breaths to get in touch with your body and where you are in space and time and where you are on this earth. So, you know, using your breath as an anchor, that's a very basic way to do it. The way that we were doing it just now with the longer exhale, that's really what turns on the parasympathetic nervous system. So I can see both of us actually really calmed down through that exercise. I didn't even yeah. want to talk afterwards. I just wanted to sit here because I, I, I feel so calm. I have energy. It's not like I'm going to fall asleep, but I'm just so at peace. And like my heart is full of inner joy. I'm just like, I feel elated for what reason? I don't know. Well, it was my honor to do that with you. Thank you. My, I can't even articulate my thoughts right now. I wish I could verbalize how that felt, but they just words just don't do it justice. Well, thank you. Yeah. So uh, I will have some meditations for your listeners that they can, um, I'm building a library, if you will. And I have both healing meditations, which was my original style of meditation and the mindfulness meditation. So, um, you know, I, I'm all about healing and getting better. And uh, when I was going through all my health challenges, I decided that I was going to be open to whatever is out there that I felt could potentially help me. And meditation definitely has exercise, improving, cleaning up my diet, sleeping better. All of these self-care things are so important so that we can fill up our pitcher because you can't pour from an empty pitcher, you know? And not only was my pitcher empty, it was probably fractured. You know, <laughs> I had to put the thing back, Humpty Dumpty, you know, I had to put the thing back together, you know? Yeah. So um, I'm much further along uh, several years later, uh, but you know, it, it's really fun to write about it. And really, you know, in, the first book was very emotional and grounded in chaos, but Seven Mindful Questions, I, I just, it seems to get deeper every time that I practice it. it it's almost to me, uh, you know, first it was a technique just to get things done because, you know, I was, I was trying to work full time in addition to, you know, I moved five times in three years. Uh, I, you know, I, I just had so much chaos going on that I just needed something to keep me centered and keep me going. And so that's what the question started out to be. And as my, um, I'm actually a certified mindfulness meditation teacher, uh, along with being board certified in pharmacotherapy. So I've got, you know, a foot in both camps, you know, the woo woo and the not so woo woo, the really <laughs> practical stuff, yeah. but, I, I, <laughs> but I have to, you know, I have to do my job. And, um, so that's what, what it started off with, but it really is, can I be present in the moment? using the questions throughout the day as i'm going through my day in the corporate environment can i bring my mindfulness practice to work and i do i do amazing so so tell us a little bit more about your guided meditations and where we can access them okay so uh my website is www.lisaneszneski.com it's l-i-s-a-n-e-z N-E-S-K-I.com. And uh, there'll be a link uh, that I'll be sending you. You can put it in your show notes for everyone. Perfect. They can sign up. Yeah. And they get access to the um, both the guided mindfulness meditations and the guided healing meditations. Amazing. Yes. And if you're watching on YouTube, I will put the link to her website and the guided meditations in the description. 
And if you are listening on the podcast at the end of the show, I will repeat everything Lisa just said. Um, mindfulness is really important. It, it wasn't until I read A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle, which I'm sure you've heard of, that I discovered what mindfulness is the first time. So I hope that there is someone that's watching and listening right now that has never been mindful. And I hope that this is the sign that you need to, to slow down a little bit. Slow down, look at the clouds in the sky, look at the stars in the sky, feel the wind on your face, feel the shower, the water dripping off your skin. And that's actually another cue trigger that I use is when I wash my hands. You know, I'm, I'm washing my hands to wash my hands. It's not a means to an end. It's not, let me wash my hands so I can dry them so I can cook my salmon and eat my dinner and then watch TV. No, it's I'm washing my hands because I'm washing my hands and, and feeling the water drip off my wrist and feeling the water pressure on the palm of my hand. And it's, it's so simple, but it's also so profound and the effects are residual right i mean if, if you continue Absolutely. to practice mindfulness every single day it's not just going to affect you in the moment but it's going to make a profound positive impact on the relationship you have with your friends and your family your focus and attention at work your quality of sleep and the physiology of your body whether it's your heart rate or whether it's your central nervous system. I mean, is there anything that I left out? No, I think you hit all the main benefits of learning meditation. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about your meditation practice? I've been meditating for about five years now. I've done transcendental meditation, guided meditation, mindfulness meditation, open monitoring meditation, visualization, and I switch it up. But tell me, tell us, more about your meditation practice and how it's evolved over time. Yeah. So I, um, I have a, a, a spot where I go outside in the morning and it's usually a minimum of 30 minutes. It can go longer if, um, I feel the need. Um, I I've gone as long as like in an hour and 20 minutes. Um, but then my mind really starts to wander. So, and then, Typically I can't sit still that long, but, um, uh, so I, I will sit for 30 minutes in the morning. Typically I've got, it uh, a nice chair where I can sit in a position where I don't feel like I need to adjust my posture. So that helps me really to, um, to, to, to ground and be in the moment. Uh, sitting outside, I have a, a backyard pool here in Florida. And so I sit by the pool and I listen to the water flowing and there's, uh, I'm in a neighborhood, so there's birds and, and, um, traffic sounds in the morning and dogs barking and other sounds. So there's other cues for me. And then, uh, sensations in my body are usually the least, uh, my least favorite. Cause I'm usually hurting, you know, if you have some, some pain someplace, you can either use that as a mindfulness, uh, uh, anchor, or if it's just too much, then you can just move to one of the others. But, um, so I, I will rotate through, uh, in, in a 30 minute period, I'll have five or six minute check-ins where I'll have a prompt, um, that brings me back into the mindfulness if I've wandered off. So it's mostly silent th for that 30, uh, minute period with, with, uh, five or six check-ins. Mm -hmm. Then um, at Thursdays and Friday mornings, I do live on Instagram, the uh, mindfulness meditation uh, live on Thursdays. And then on Fridays, I do the healing meditations live. Um, and then every night before I go to bed, I do a healing meditation. So uh, those involve grounding yourself, reaching up into the heavens for heavenly energy and letting both of those uh, run through your body and move things out um, in, in that way. So they're a little different type of practice than a mindfulness practice, but that that's how I do my meditations. Amazing. Amazing. And to all the people that are listening and watching right now, you don't have to meditate for an hour and 20 minutes. You don't have to meditate for 30 minutes. 
You don't have to meditate for 10 minutes or five minutes, but checking in with yourself, being aware that you're aware, acknowledging your thoughts, trying to disidentify from your emotions, all these things encompass mindfulness and meditation. And it's a practice. You can't succeed. You can't fail. As long as you're doing it, you're doing it. So it's more of like a consistency type thing, right? I do my best to meditate for 20 minutes a day. It doesn't always happen. I'm going to be honest. I haven't meditated in close to a week at this point. And this is the longest I've gone without meditating. And uh, I've seen a lot of the negative impacts that not going through with my meditation practice has encompassed in my life. But um, I'm going to get back to that as soon as we end this podcast. I'm going to drop into a five-minute meditation and get back on my daily meditation practice because the benefits are, are endless. And Lisa, I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the podcast today. It was nothing short of a pleasure. And I really enjoy connecting with like-minded people. So I just want to thank you again. And uh, I, I wish you nothing but the best and with everything you're, you're doing. Thank you so much, Zach. It really was a true pleasure. And I really hope your listeners enjoyed those few minutes of, of meditation that we actually did. And I hope they enjoy the podcast. Absolutely. All right, Lisa, have a wonderful day. And hopefully we can connect again soon. Love to. Thank you.